They'll be coming for you with pitchforks and guillotines. That's the warning of an ex-Goldman Sachs executive who's been studying what's happened over the last year, who looks at the rising inequality in the West, who looks at the increased political capital to tax the rich and drive them away, and even that billionaires shouldn't exist. I'm going to share with you his article, one that every nomad capitalist should hear. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson here at Nomad Capitalist, our team of three dozen people around the world, our network of global experts curated throughout the years, and yours truly helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors who want to legally go where you're treated best. More at nomadcapitalist.com, including almost 2,000 free articles you can read. Let's talk about pitchforks and guillotines. This is an article I found on the New York Post, and it's written by uh, Thornton McEnery. Headline warns, ex-Goldman Sachs exec warns of wealth gap revolution. And it goes like this. One Wall Street power player is urging his fellow one percenters to help close the growing wealth gap or risk staring down pitchforks and guillotines. We already saw, not so long ago, people standing outside of, was it Jeff Bezos' house with a guillotine ready to punish him? I mean, certainly the guy, along with many other successful people, yours truly included, have become wealthier throughout this pandemic. It wasn't like Jeff Bezos was standing in the wet market in Wuhan shopping for porcupines for his dinner. He just happened to have a business that benefited from the way that the world is going. But, you know, he should be blamed for that. The article continues. Ex-Goldman Sachs chief financial officer Marty Chavez sounded off on income inequality during an interview with the financial news site The Business of Business while also taking a shot at Congressman AOC for flaming the class war fires, no doubt. You don't want the inequality to become so extreme that it leads to a revolution, Chavez said. So you ought to be prepared to pay to decrease that probability of it happening. Chavez says he supports doing this through a universal basic income, which proposes set government payments to all U.S. adults to keep people out of poverty and help fund small businesses and innovation. Just read about UB the other day. Listen, if it's not my country anymore. It's not my concern. If you want to have UBI in the U.S. or in Switzerland or wherever, go ahead. And you can reap the whatever consequences come of that. But what I did read the other day was they're getting really aggressive because when you have billionaires on your side uh, who are basically whitewashing themselves to, uh, to help uh, you know, keep themselves out of the fire, then the people on the left get even more empowered, more emboldened. And they say, you know, who are we to tell people they should spend their universal basic income on food? One politician said, maybe they want to buy cigarettes. Maybe they want to go to an amusement park. I, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, I mean, what, you're right. Why tell people they have to spend money on food? If you do, they might come after you with a pitchfork uh, or a guillotine. Chavez, uh, is the 56-year-old ex-Goldman grandee who's openly gay and a longtime Democratic Party donor on board with UBI, but he was critical of AOC. When asked his thoughts, of, I, don't, I don't know what, what does any of that matter about he's gay. Okay, so, all right. Um, when asked about AOC's opinion that there should be no billionaires in the U.S. as long as they're poor families, Chavez chuckled audibly before throwing shade at the Queen's Congress uh, woman. I'm not in AOC's camp at all, he shouldered. I didn't vote for her. I wouldn't vote for her. She's not saying anything that makes any sense to me, but I am a big proponent of universal basic income. So uh, let's break this down. What you have right now in the West is basically a system of extortion. If you don't agree to pay more, uh, we're going to come after you with pitchforks and guillotines. Now, Jeff Bezos, for example, has created a great company that people love, people use it. When I was growing up, it was the Walton family who created Walmart, who created stores that people like to shop at. And see, this is the challenge of you know, having a type of government like this, where people get all the benefits of capitalism, and then they go and get to complain about it and make the people who have benefited the most pay more. You know, Jeff Bezos, sacrificed everything to start Amazon. There was no guarantee of success. And now after all these years of the business steadily growing, 
The business in many years didn't make any profit because they plowed the ball back into continually growing the business. I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I don't plow every dollar I make back into the business because I guess I'm a little bit too risk averse. And so guess what? I'm not as wealthy as Jeff Bezos, nor do I deserve to be. Whether I personally like Jeff Bezos or not is irrelevant. Uh, and so you have now a system in the Western world where pay more or you're going to suffer. And you've seen the mayor, for example, where Goldman Sachs operates, the mayor of New York, who's saying, we need wealth distribution. You've seen growing calls to send everyone a check, universal basic income. Now, during the pandemic, it's $2,000 checks a month, not only retroactively, just like the taxes will be retroactive, they want the, the checks to be retroactive. Um, but checks until this whole thing is over. Until this whole thing is over, it'll go on as long as they say it does. And so I look at this from a different perspective. I look at this and I say to myself, there are people like me who decided the United States does not serve our best interests. And you can insert the UK, Australia, any other country where people are coming out with the pitchforks, basically. And they're threatening to potentially murder you if you have too much money. Probably taking it a little bit too far. Lots of keyboard warriors out there. I'm well aware of that. But they're saying they're going to do some bad stuff to you. And you've, saw, you've seen what happens in the protests of the last years. They'll come marching through your neighborhood. And so, you know, people like me have created jobs in countries that didn't always have those opportunities. Countries where when I was born, you would never think of even going. And now I've decided I'm going to hire people who've had better educations than many people in the United States, have a higher level, for, for example, of, of university degree. Um, and I'm going to hire them. We're going to be able to take more risks by hiring more people at lower wages, take the ones that work, and eventually work them up to pay them more and more. So they make a lot more than they, most people earn in their country. And some of them make as much or more that you'd make in the United States in a country with a far lower cost of living and create great opportunities for people to grow. But what does that mean? It means I'm not hiring in countries that have made it very tax unfriendly, very cost prohibitive, very regulatory, uh, regulatorily difficult, uh, and very challenging from a risk perspective, like the United States. And so I look at it as, as opportunities in other countries open up, more capital is going to flow to those opportunities. And what does that mean? It's going to mean you're going to have greater inequality, which I'm not saying is necessarily good. But you're going to have people like me who are going to hire 36 people, all the way up to Jeff Bezos, who hires gazillions of people. And we're going to say, why do I have to be loyal uh, to my country? Why do I have to go and hire the kids who you know, uh, beat me up in high school. Why do I need to go and give them a, I don't owe them a job. I'll go where I'm treated best. And that means that you're going to see the economies of the Malaysias and the Serbias and the Colombias and so many other countries around the world are going to rise as more people go there. And we've already seen uh, in just in the last couple of years how wages in some of these countries are slowly but surely rising because more people like me are coming in and putting back offices in these countries opening up countries or companies in these countries. And so that means that the US and other countries like it actually have to be more innovative. But no, it's much easier for people just to come out with their pitchforks and their guillotines and threaten rather than find a way to make themselves useful, rather than find a way to innovate or learn a new skill or adapt to the 21st century. That the 21st century that they so love that they can have makeup and purses and shaving kits delivered within mere hours by Amazon Prime, but they hate because the internet actually gets to work in other countries too. And those people now get to have a chance at employment as well. So their response, let's not figure out how to start our own business. Let's not figure out how to be a freelancer and charge more money. Let's just go out and vote for people who want to take from that evil guy over there. And that's exactly why I don't want to give these people jobs. Because I'll tell you this, whether you believe it or not, sitting in the United States, there are countries around the world that are simply much more welcoming. There are countries where the goal of the people is to eat three of the same cheap meal every day and buy a motorcycle. And if they're really lucky, they'll buy a really cheap domestically made car. That's literally the goal. That's happiness to them. And they don't look, as they say, into other people's pockets. If your goal is to go out and make a million dollars a year, that doesn't affect them. They still get to eat their rice in a banana leaf. 
I'm not criticizing. I think it's actually a beautiful thing that some people are able to be happy with less. But, you know, people want to live in the U.S. in a consumer culture. They want to say, money doesn't matter. You people with your money, that's not what's so important. And then complain that they don't have much money. Well, they have three TVs in their house and they have multiple pairs of shoes and things that most people in the world don't have. You guys need to get it straight. The difference is, I'm not here making a political statement. I don't care what you want to do with the U.S. fork force because I won't be hiring anyone in the U.S. That ship has sailed. And I've had more people call me saying, Andrew, I think you're right. I need to outsource my 50 people. I want to move them out of the U.S. There's just too much risk here. It's too expensive. It's too much nonsense. That's what's going to happen. Now, is that the entire piece of inequality? No, but I'm not going to blame Jeff Bezos for creating something that everyone wanted because the government put them in a position where they needed to want it. It's not Jeff Bezos' fault there's a pandemic and people started ordering online. So why are we blaming him? Why don't we blame the governor of the state of Goldman Sachs who put a bunch of people in nursing homes, led to total chaos. This is again, not political. I'm not a conservative, I'm not a liberal. What I am saying is you should go where you're treated best. And if people in your country are threatening pitchforks and guillotines, and if rich guys like Chavez are saying, trying to you know, adjust their statements and be in favor of certain things to make sure that the pitchforks hopefully don't come for them, that's when it's time to leave. You pack up your stuff and you go to a country where your business is welcome, where people want your jobs, where people want to work, where people are glad you're there contributing to their economy rather than calling you a leech because you don't want to pay $2 billion of your $10 billion in income. Oh, he's not paying his fair share with his $2 billion, someone recently commented. That's when you know it's time to go where you're treated best. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.